Hello again. Shining light one. Today I would like to do a uh, little exhortation called Logos Linguistics. Now out of Revelation 10 and 4, God had me looking at uh, fractals of seven. And then when I came to this, <clears throat> I was, uh, <coughs> I knew in my spirit that this is where God wanted us to go. So Revelation 10 and 4 says, And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice say, Seal up what the thunders uttered and write them not. Okay. Now, it says, uh, now for the Greek word voices is phone, which could mean, which is a, uh, means language, can mean language, okay? So, I got to looking, and I got to praying about that, and as a lot of revelation unfolds, you got to, you got to look into it. You got to hear what God's saying. And what I heard God saying was that uh, Logos Linguistics. And of course, I know what the Logos is. I've, I've looked at that a long time ago. Logos is in John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word. So I got to praying about it, I got to thinking about it. And I thought, seven thunders uttering their language. And I thought, now, is there seven types of language? I thought about it a minute. And I felt that I needed to get on the web and look it up. Now, there are five types of spoken language in the, er in the earth or the world today. One is isolating Two is agglutinating. Three is inflecting. Four is polysynthetic. Five is analytic. Now, I could go into a brief explanation of those, but I really don't have time for that, and that's not really the main point of what we want to get at. So, praying it out about a little bit, and then all of a sudden, hit, spirit hit me. Language of angels, referred to by Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1. <coughs> now, if you go to Revelation chapter 2 in verse 17, you'll also see that there was a language, there was a stone with a name written that only God and the person that receives it knows. Got a little ditty on that too. So it's the language spoken of by God to his redeemed, to his overcomers. Not just the redeemed, but the overcomers. Now, it's pretty. It's a pretty interesting little deal there. You think about a stone. Now think about this. Jesus said, you are Peter, Petros, <coughs> which means little stone. <coughs> and Jesus said, but upon this rock, talking about himself, Petra, I will build my church. So the re, re, the, those the overcomers, they get a piece of the rock. <laughs> Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Language spoken of by God to his redeemed. Hallelujah. Now, as I said, in John chapter 1, verse 1, logos is the Greek word for word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Now, I have a feeling we'll probably come back to that later. Logos. It's the divine expression or what? Language. Genesis 3 and 8. God would commune with Adam in, in, in the cool of the day. But in the rebellion that came from the eating of the fruit of the tree they were not supposed to eat from, true expression was distorted. 
instead of a divine metanoia, conversion of the mind and the heart, having an illuminated mind and heart, they received a paranoia. Where are you, Adam? I hid from you because I was naked. Who told you you were naked? Have you partaken of the tree that I told you not to? So, instead of the divine metanoia, the peace of God, the shalom, amen, they developed a paranoia, a shame because they were naked, even like God could see through them. Hmm. So, now, there is also a thing called a wicked heart of unbelief. And, <coughs> and I'll reinforce this later. But friends, that's exactly what we need to pray deliverance for, for America and for every single one of us. Hallelujah. Be delivered from a wicked heart of unbelief. So, that was the first transgression and digression from God himself. We stepped away from God, took a cue somewhere else, made a terrible mistake, sin entered into the world. So, you know, uh, God uh, finally destroyed the world by water and sent us a rainbow, promising that he would never do it again. Saved enough of mankind through Noah that they could restart again. <coughs> now, fallen angels had come into the daughters of men, made men renown of renown, giants that were in the land. So that brought it to a point with the fallen angels mixing with man that wickedness was was the only thing that was ever considered and, and that's what ever, everybody thought about. It's what everybody did. <coughs> Excuse me. A wicked heart of unbelief. Now, we go to Genesis chapter 11. We see an incident where there's people gathering together and they're building. They're building a tower called the Tower of Babel. Well, guess what? Those angels <coughs> that lost their first estate again, lay in the groundwork of temptation. And here they, they said, you know, we're going to make a name for ourselves. Well, in the interior part of this, knowledge was being released or there was a seeking for the abundance of knowledge to be released from what? The stars. The stars were created <coughs> for times and seasons. And there's also what's called a Maseroth, which tells <coughs> the gospel in the stars. Excuse me. I wasn't coughing at all until I started this. Isn't that interesting? <coughs> okay, well, Father, I just praise you and I thank you and I pray that you give me grace to, to be able to do this. Hallelujah. So knowledge released and was a delightsome pride and brought the desire of honor and literally godhood. We can reach the stars. They can. Uh, that's where we where astrology comes from, stems from. Amen. So the second great rebelling was that they're going to make themselves a name. They're going to rise up in the stars. They're going to gain all of this knowledge, this wisdom. And God said, if we don't stop them now, there's nothing that they won't be able to do. There'll be no containing them, so to speak. And so God confounded their speech. God made it so they could not communicate with one another. Why? Because they were, their deeds, they were going right down that wrong path again, following in line with the fallen angels and, you know, there's an interesting thing that in the study of this, looking at it, this was located in the land of Shinar, or Shinar. In one place, thought the word Shinar from Hebrew, Shene, to repeat, <coughs> excuse me, and Nair, meaning childhood, which means land of regeneration, immortality. Remember the first temptation in the garden? You'll be, oh, God just doesn't want you to be like him. You'll be as gods, 
when you partake and you have that re that wisdom and God's like, you'll be God's. Ooh. Sounds pretty much like the same temptation being enacted. Only actually being acted upon. <coughs> Excuse me, goodness. <coughs> Backdoor to immort immortality and godhood. After this dispersion, which I call this the second great transgression, removing them again, confounding their speech. Now, you see, we're talking about languages, and the end result of all those different languages falling into those five groups, five types, that I talked to you about earlier. From this point on, after this dispersion, God would speak to and through prophets, the secrets of God. <coughs> and that's how he would communicate with man. Now, you know, a lot of people would suppose you got to be a, you had to be a prophet or somebody like that to receive anything from God. I don't believe that. I don't believe that's it at all. <clears throat> I think anybody's heart that was toward God would give God's attention. Now, God begins to give man the law at Mount Sinai to express divine expression, his, his desire, what he wanted, and also an outline of himself in his own nature. This was one of God's high places on Mount Sinai that he got with Moses and the law was given. Now let's... <clears throat> this was one of God's high places. These places is where the fallen ones sought out for their own groves, you see. That's why when you read in the Old Testament, it talks about tearing down the groves, the altars to the Baals and the Ashtoreths and so on and so forth, the gods that were no gods. <clears throat> now let's see that Jesus' logos came forth, as John the Baptist said, to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Literally, Jesus in the Hebrew, Jehoshua, means, name means salvation. The divine expression, the divine language is salvation, Okay. So that salvation is, is his communication. Those who encounter him and believe on him have truly heard and begin the metanoia journey. Now Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. They recognize my voice. Okay. Well, and then there's a language of God that we also need to learn and, and to allow to be what the way we, what we speak, what speaks what we speak unto God and understand what he's relating to us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so that salvation is the divine expression. Now, uh, you see, and that was in the, uh, the uh, Passover age, right? Up to the point where, where uh, God uh, led the people of Israel, children of Israel, out of Egypt begun the Passover age all the way to the dying of Jesus upon the cross because he was the Lamb of God. The Passover Lamb takes away the sins of the world. <clears throat> and once he had commissioned his disciples and told them to go tarry in the upper room would start the Pentecostal age because that was the second major feast. So that... <coughs> And Jesus said, Tarry you there in, in Jerusalem too, you be endued with power from on high. The law was given on Pentecost, amen, on the date of Pentecost, as was the pouring out of the Spirit. This done so that man could testify that Jesus is the expression and salvation of God, that man, that what, what separated language in the Tower of Babel, coming full circle into the Holy Spirit, was the bringing together of tongues and the ability to communicate with others the wonderful gospel of God and the testimony of Jesus. <clears throat> okay. Now, within the spiritual gifts are the ability to communicate with God and our fellow man and to discern 
the spirits. We truly need to get a handle on this discerning of spirits. Now, I'm going to probably come in and out of looking at spiritual gifts within the meantime of this whole thing, okay? <coughs> so in the spiritual gifts, there's discernment of spirits. So that that to many, and, and it is true, means being knowing when devils come and go, the difference between good and evil, uh, wicked spirits, discerning wicked spirits, what kind of wicked spirits, depending upon the level of discernment, okay? Now, we must also remember and recognize something else as well. Now, this can fall in and does many times fall in with these spiritual gifts. And, and it falls into the line of this. Now, we are a triune being. We, are, we have a spirit. We have a soul. And we have a body. Our spirit is born via through the Holy Spirit, the spoken word of God, comes into us and ignites us. The language of God ignites our spirit. Okay? So our fellow man also has a spirit as well. And in this spiritual gift of discernment, we need to be able and we have the ability often to discern what's in their spirit. Now, there was a, there's several places. There's one place I remember specifically. I don't remember the exact place in the Bible that it is. But it said that Jesus did not need anybody to testify what was in men's hearts because he already knew what was in men's hearts. He discerned, he was able to discern what was already on their heart. So we need that discernment. We need that ability to discern it. And a lot of times we, we only look at it to the bad. We need to be able to discern wicked people. Well, we do. We, we need to know who to minister to, who to avoid, when, how, so on and so forth. It all goes hand in hand with discerning. Now, uh, but there's also a good side to that too. Know them that labor among you. Discern them that labor among you. So often we argue over so many things with other believers. Okay? Here's another reason why we need to come into this Logos Linguistics, the understanding of God's language because we need to be able to discern that they're trying, they might be saying the same thing we're saying, they just have different terminology to use, and it hits certain buzzwords that we have from our past that triggers, oh no, that's error, walk away, kick it out, you know? You need to discern what people are saying. Many times we're at odds with somebody, we argue with somebody, to try to get them to use our vernacular when what we really need to do is listen closely and discern what they're saying and maybe they might have a point that we have not considered yet. Maybe they have a different view on some of the revelation that even we have and if, if we can get a unity going then we can communicate and we can bless one another. That's the way it's supposed to work anyway. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Many times we might find ourselves in more of an agreement than not an agreement. So it's about the creators. Logos, divine expression in our fellow man, in us, and in us. We are in a journey of language, if you will. We've got the third feast coming, tabernacles, where it's an open heaven. Open heaven. We have got to come through some of our our, our 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 wars, our little arguments and spats when there isn't one. We're looking for a fight when there isn't a fight. Learn how, let's learn how to talk to one another, communicate with one another, amen? We are in a journey of language, if you will, God's language. We need to be logos linguistics, linguists, or studiers of the divine language because God will talk to us in many ways. He'll use a lot of things to trigger thoughts and revelation in us and help us to understand and relate to it. So we are, since we are discussing the language of God and spiritual gifts, I would also like to address the gift of tongues and particularly one passage about them. 1 Corinthians 14, 21 and 22. In the law it is written, Isaiah 28 and 11, 
With men of other lips and tongues will I speak to these people, yet for all that will they not hear me. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them who believe, but for them who believe not. Now you see, think about this. When the Holy Spirit fell, they were talking in tongues, those in the upper room, and they were talking out loud in front of unbelievers. And each one of those unbelievers were hearing in their own native language the, them glorifying God. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. Glorifying God. Another scripture comes to mind is in Ezekiel 14 and 4, I will answer a man according to his idol. So a man who refuses to hear God's word will receive his rebuke in ways that he can't even comprehend. Israel's example of this was captivity. To Babylon, for example, a people that they couldn't understand, the idol of such people are their hard heart. God will let their hard heart to lead them into his fire. They won't understand the run of bad luck. As in Isaiah 28 and 2, God has designed his hail as a recompense. Former and latter rains are signs of a move in the spirit. So the hail represents a hard word of judgment. Difficult to comprehend, but it brings about its end. For the word of God goes forth and does not return to him void. But it accomplishes the very thing he sent it to. Now, I'm going to probably close with this. I don't know how much of this I'll, I'll get into, but we'll get as far as we can here in a short amount of time. Now, I'd like to go in another part. Psalm 34 and 8. We're in the process of learning the language of God. It says this, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Taste, Hebrew, ta'am, to perceive. <clears throat> so there are many good gifts of God. The best one is his presence to be with you and upon you. The spirit of God and the spirit of man communing together as a divine revelation or truth. The awe and wonder of an awesome God. This is a treasure discernment of spirit, a gifting that opens us up to understand who our awesome God is. Tob, from above. To do sustainable things to keep forever. Ta'am, taste and discern. Remember what the word says in Acts 17, 28. For in him we live, move, and have our being. In our discerning of God, we always, in the backdrop of our thinking, is to know is to know He wants to sustain and keep us forever. That is His aim. That is His goal. That is His salvation. That is His language and communication to us. So to know the language of God, you have to know His heart. Okay? Because it will help you to discern false doctrine from, from righteous doctrine. Uh, a false word from a good word. We develop that discernment. Folks, in this day and hour, that discernment is key, very key in this, in this day and hour. So, you know, many people think God is a vengeful and tyrant God. What happens to our understanding of love? What happens to understanding that God desires to sustain us forever, lift us up? All the promises in Christ are yea and amen. See, what happens is, is we have a fear-based knowledge and understanding because we make or interpret God in our image and, and, and not us in His image. You see, uh, when you look at, another way of looking at the fear of the Lord is the awe and wonder and the sheer amazement of who God is how much he loves, and how far he is willing to go to bring his language, his salvation to all mankind. All mankind. That is the message of a reconciliation, my friend. And I think that God's speaking to me right now, saying that, you know, this is a good stopping point. And i just like to pray a short prayer here. We, have, we are knowing division in our land like we have never known it. 
But you know, it's always been there in the backdrop, in the background. What happens? We're too busy being critical and not looking to be our brother's keeper, you know? So, Father, I just pray tonight that you would rid us of a wicked heart of unbelief. To quit looking and, and trying to figure out what wicked thing is on upon, upon my brother or sister's heart. Uh, and being separated and divided and abusing ourselves and being abused. Father, I pray that you would lead us into your salvation. Hallelujah, Father God. Sustain us. Bring us back. We desire your mercy. We deserve wrath, but I'm asking you for mercy. I'm asking you to turn the hearts back. Raise us up from the dead, the death of dead thinking. Father, resurrect a people in this land and bring healing in Jesus' name. Amen.